Hi, welcome to Cry Out. We are on location in Laguna Beach. We're here on a little getaway, but we just figured we're going to shoot an episode while we're here. We're going to talk about some, some testimonies and some awesome things the Lord has done. So sit tight. Here we go. I want to talk about a testimony, an actual very personal testimony, uh, which literally is the reason why I'm even here today. Uh, it's basically me when I went through stage four cancer. This was back in 2006, 2007. Uh, I went through six months of chemo. I went through two operations. It was a testicular cancer. It was stage four. I had a four and a half pound tumor. If there's any guys watching this thing, you're probably gonna go, ah! Yeah, it did, it was not fun. And I'm sure you're asking like, why did I take it to stage four? Why didn't I go into the doctor early on? And pretty much because I was stupid. Pretty much because I had a bad attitude against doctors. They, my uh, grandparents had been through some trouble with doctors and had been hurt for various things that, these like little scams that happened and so, my attitude was that I would rather have monkeys with knives operate on me than a bunch of doctors because I was just completely, completely not interested in doctors. I said, Lord, you're going to heal me. That's it. I am going to have this stubborn attitude no matter what because you're going to heal me. And that's it. I practically demanded that the Lord healed me. Even though I, I knew the Lord's a healer. I knew he could do it. I knew he can do it. And yet at the same time, it's like I'm going against the Lord Most High and saying, you're going to heal me no matter what, because I decide so. And I took it to the point where I was stuck in bed. I could, I could barely even move, and I had to call out to my mom and tell, hey, get me to ER, get me in. I cannot take it anymore. And I kind of realized I reached that point at stage four in that horrific pain that I was being stupid. I was basically telling the Lord he's going to heal me and I didn't know what the Lord's real plan was for it. Because very early on, and when the early stages of 2006, when I think it was really small, I felt this little thought that came in that said, get yourself to a doctor. And that's when I did the entire thing. I just turned away. I was not going to put up with it. I was not going to hear it. And unfortunately, I had to go through a whole bunch of, I went through a huge mess. But the testimony lies in what happened during that time and how the Lord used it to not only heal me, but also to heal my, my uh, mental uh, processes, that, which were telling me I, that I should have knives, I mean, uh, monkeys with knives. So when I went in to the ER, the first doctor I had, she's a female doctor. She came in. She recognized testicular cancer as like the young man's cancer. It affects mostly young men. I had never heard of that. Uh, so she was really concerning. She was gonna get me to a specialist right away. My attitude was like negative, negative up high. And when I met her, it's going, it's getting better. It's like, okay, this is somebody who really cares. And then the specialist I go to, it's this black, this is black man, African-American man, and all right, this is the largest thing I've ever operated on and such, and yet, I mean, he's telling all the risks, he's telling all these things, and then he's saying, but you're going to get through this, and we're like, how does he know that? How does he know we're going to get through it? And we're getting ready for the operation, and, and he's basically saying his faith is going to get him through it. And of course, I'm kind of like, my attitude's bad, but my attitude's getting better, and yeah, he's talking about faith, and I'm going, wait a minute, what? Wait, wait a minute, this is a doctor, this is the enemy. Why is the enemy talking about faith? And so, the doctor, before he go into the operation, he says to we're asking, do we have time to pray? And he says, yeah, can I lead? The doctor takes my hand, takes my mom's hand. He's guiding through the most powerful spirit-filled prayer I've ever heard in my life out of a doctor. My attitude towards doctors went from still having a little bit to gone. And I didn't completely realize it at the time. And then I went through the operation under him. And then I went through some chemo, six months of chemo. It was really rough, really hard. 
uh, except the Lord protected me from most of the side effects. And the nurses were saying the whole time, it's like, why isn't he having the side effects to my mom? They're saying this to my mom. Where's the side effects? Where's the side effects? We can't figure out where the side effects are. And he's he lying? And I'm like, no, he's not lying. He's not throwing up. He's not going through these horrific things. And so that was a testimony for them. And my mom's just praying on me constantly as I'm going through these uh, chemo injections. And that's pretty much around the time when I'm starting to realize, it's like, you know what? I didn't have to go through this. I didn't have to go through stage four cancer. I didn't have to go through all these m months of chemo if I would have gone in when the Lord told me to go in. And if I would have listened and not had that stupid, stupid attitude that they're all bad, they're all good, just because a couple that I ran into with my grandparents were bad doesn't make them all bad. So... I'm going through all those months in chemo. I finish that up. I'm facing an operation on the lymph node, which there's lymph nodes all throughout your body, but the one that they operate on is right here, so it's a big cut that goes down, and it's a bit more major operation. And at that time, we're getting involved in the healing rooms, and we're learning more about the Lord. We're getting closer to the Lord, and I go through that operation, and they pull out the cancerous lymph node, and they had to do a big cut because they were concerned that it had spread to the other organs. And when they, put, when, they get, when they get in there, they're just shocked. And they're pulling out this lymph node, and it's so compacted, so encapsulated in there. And the doctors are just shaking their heads like, how did this not spread? How did this not go all throughout his organs and cause all sorts of, of chaos? And when they tested it, because I had two types of cancer. One was... Uh, one was the, the first one that reacted to, to chemo, and the second, which was anything left, did not react to chemo. So everything that was left in that lymph node was stuff that didn't react to chemo. So they're like, they're just amazed. The doctors are amazed. They didn't even need to give me any extra blood. I mean, they cut me open and all this stuff, and they didn't need any extra blood to push into me. Where is that? Come on. It's another testimony of the Lord. And lastly where the healing comes in where the real healing the, where the real manifestation that comes in after all these testimonies all these things that should have been building all the confidence but I had to have another operation on my lungs because it had spread to the lungs uh, uh, from the early stages and it was my lungs pretty much were like they were just like little little dots just scattered all throughout the lungs so I'm facing that operation I go to the doctor this doctor does not know the Lord. He does not care. He's just like one of the ones that was the enemy one. So I said, okay, we're going to go through the lung operation. And it's going to be even worse than the lymph node operation. Doesn't give you any confidence. Doesn't give you any encouragement. So I was like, okay, this is going to be great. So, so I'm going in. I have to get a CT scan before the, the, the lung operation. That's just to see, they want to update to see where all the little spots are to make sure that they're going to be able to just go in and pull them out real, real easily. So I'm like crying out to the Lord then. I'm like, Lord, the lymph node operation, that was really rough. The recovery was really rough. Uh, I, don't, I can't, Lord, I can't deal with another one of these rough recoveries. It's too much, Lord, it's just, I'm just crying out, which is the title of this show. And as I'm crying out, I'm also reading the handbook for the healing rooms, which is uh, Christ the Healer. Uh, if you can find a book, a, a copy of Christ the Healer, definitely get it, read it. It's awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a copy in, 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 in Indonesian or in whatever language that our viewers are watching in, but. If you can find it, I highly work, recommend it. It's basically, when you go into Healing Room Ministries, that's the training book. That's what you go by. This is how you learn to pray what you need to pray in healing rooms. So I'm reading that book for the, for the training on the healing room at the time. And I'm going to the healing room to get prayer everything during this time too. And I'm at one point in that book, and all of a sudden... I can't even remember where I was at in that book. I just knew what I knew deep down inside. You're healed. It's just, I had no proof. No nothing, no nothing. It's just, you're healed. 
and the way you feel it, it's like, it's something you know in like the pit of your soul, in the very center of your being, that it's done, it's finished, and that there's no doubt, there's no questioning it, it's done. And yet my, my, my human body, my regular, like, mortal mind is saying, how do you know that? How do you know that? Wait, wait, wait a minute. So, the Lord has me open up my Bible, opens up to Hebrews, to write to the verse, and we will put it on, on screen for you, to not cast off your confidence that it carries a great reward. I opened up the Bible directly to that thing, right? As like the Lord's telling me, open it up, right? And I'm flips, the Bible like flips right to that page. So I'm like, okay, hold fast to that confidence. Do not let it go because you're healed. It's done. So, okay, I have a CT, I have the uh, healing room session. I'm going to go and get prayer and then I have a CT scan the, the next day. So I go in to get prayer in the healing room. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going to go on, Lord. Every single verse person on the healing room team they get that exact verse. And that's like your confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmations. So I'm like, okay, okay, I receive it. Yeah, it's healed, but there's still the physical part. There's still the mental part that's saying, wait a minute, wait, wait, how do you know that? Because you don't have any proof. So I was going to say, wait, you know what? I'm just going to make a decision when I go into the CT room scan the next day to get the scan done. I'm going to be just praising the Lord throughout the whole thing. So I go in there, I'm drinking all the nasty fluid, which, ugh, I don't recommend it. I'm going through all that stuff, I'm just praising the Lord, just thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, you've done this, you've done this, I'm praising Him, I'm just singing songs to Him, going through the, through the scan machine. And that's it, I finish the day, I go home, they have to wait for the results, and then the doctor's going to call. Three days later, Sunday after church, Right after I get home, phone rings. I got the doctor on the line. The doctor's, his voice is like shaking. It's like, oh, I'm like, okay, what is going on? What has happened? He says, it's showing activity. I'm like, oh, great. I says, yeah, so what's, how is it going? What, how's it happened? It's shrinking and we don't know why. So I'm just like, okay, wait, there's your medical proof. There's the medical proof that the healing is happening, that it's done. And the doctor's then telling me, because he's trying to, in his mind, his medical mind, he doesn't know the Lord, and he's trying to figure out how this is working. And he's trying to say, well, maybe some leftover over chemo in your body. I mean, I was at least six months or more removed from going through chemo at that time. And everything left in my body did not react to chemo. There was no reaction, no nothing. And he's trying to tell me that it's the stuff that is left over in my body reacting to something that doesn't react to it. It doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to it. And the guy's he's asking me, well, do you want to go through it? Do you want to go through the operations and the show an activity? And I'm just like, nope, 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 no, I'm not doing it. Not doing it. I'm healed. That's it. I'm done. Put me on a scan routine. I'll check it in another few months. So I, he said, okay. I got on the scan routine, did one more of those. They didn't tell me any results. And then they were like, well, maybe some more. And it's like all of a sudden I stopped getting the cards, stopped getting everything. And I just stood on it. I was like, you know what? I don't need any more of these scan routines because what the Lord has done is good and His Word is not going to return void. His Word is alive and active and it is true. So, yeah, that's another part of this whole message, this whole testimony, is you got to stand on it. you got to stand on His Word. you got to stand on His promises, His testimonies for you, and everything He's, he's done. And that's why it helps to share testimonies. It helps to be able to talk like this, to share a story, to say, hey, you know what? I was in the darkest time. I was in the worst possible situation. And the Lord came through for me. And He's going to come through for you as well. He will. That's just who He is. If you cry out to Him and call upon His name. Amen? Amen.
Lord Jesus, I just cry out for those watching this vid that you would just bless them now, that this word, this testimony would cause great impact in their lives. Lord, anybody that's suffering, anybody that's going through like a no-win situation right now, I just cry out, Lord, that you would be there. You would cause this word, cause this testimony to be sweet in their ears and that your hand would just be upon them. And Lord, anything they're going through, that they're going to see confirmations, they're going to see healings happening. Lord, I cry out for any cancer patients listening. I just say that cancer has to shrink and has to vanish in Jesus' name. So I ask, Lord, that you would just release the healing anointing you've given me to go forth through them, to touch them right now, and that all of this cancer in their bodies will be healed, will be shrunken in Jesus' name. And Lord, anybody that has a bad attitude, anybody that has like a hardness of heart towards doctors, towards people in the medical profession, that there are those in the medical field that love you, those that want to actually be there to help people. They're not there for the money. They want to be there to see people well, see people healthy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Be sure to keep in touch with us. We're going to be doing more of these episodes in the days to come. Look forward to the next one. Johnny! Bye!